April 10th, 2023. Chair Seaman? Uh, present. Vice Chair Price? Present. Member Gone is excused. Member Allen Polinski? Present. Thank you. You have a quorum. Yes, it has. Thank you. Excellent idea. Thank you. I'll, seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion and we'll, make, we'll move on to item number four. Agenda item number four for possible action to approve the final minutes by reference of the regular meeting of January 9th, 2023. Is there a motion for approval? Motion for approval. There's a motion. Second um, the motion. All in favor. Oh, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, Eric Price, aye. Please post. The motion carries. Let's move on to item number five. Agenda item number five, discussion for possible action regarding audit of Department of Parks, Recreation and Cultural Affairs, Floyd Lamb Park Payment Collections. James Burnett, Senior Internal Auditor, will be discussing the audit. Please go ahead, Mr. Burnett. Thank you, Chairwoman Seaman. Um, all right. I'm James Burnett, Senior Internal Auditor. Uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation and Department of Parks, Recreation and Cultural Affairs manages the operation of the city's Floyd Lamb Park. The park is located on 600 acres, 15 miles northwest of downtown Las Vegas. Park employees oversee the entrance to the park and collect vehicle admission fees from a gatehouse. There are nine part-time employees and a supervisor that works in the gatehouse. The gatehouse hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily, May through September, and 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, October through April. The park admission fees per vehicle are as follows. A daily pass is $6, an annual pass is $50, a senior pass is $25, and individuals in a bus or passenger van are $1 per person. Vehicles with individuals who are, in, who are active duty military, veterans, handicapped, or realtors are granted free access to the park. While there are other fees that are charged for use of the park, such as rental fees and picnic areas and various special events, those fees are processed through either online or through Parks Administration. During fiscal year 2022, Gatehouse collections totaled $299,817, including $163,359 in cash, and $136,458 in credit cards. Parks utilizes a recreation management software known as Civic Rec, and payments at the gatehouse are recorded into this software. Our audit objectives were, us, were to review the payment collections process at the Floyd Lamb Park gatehouse and determine whether payments are receded in accordance with the department's Departments and cities cash handling policies and procedures. Payments are being accurately processed, balanced, and recorded in Civic Rec system. Deposits are being properly prepared, remitted to the armored car service, reconciled to the bank records, and posted to the general ledger. Keys to the gatehouse are being properly controlled, and gatehouse door locks are changed when keys are lost. System access permissions are assigned to gatehouse employees are, are appropriate for their job responsibilities. Finding number one, during our audit of the Floyd Lamb Park Gatehouse payment collection procedures, we identified the following areas of non-compliance with the department's and city's cash handling policies and procedures. Each day's deposits are picked up on the following business day by an armored courier service. Saturday's deposits are held in a safe until Monday or the next business day in the case of a holiday. Therefore, the gatehouse is not in compliance with the city's policy requiring that all cash collections, regardless of amount, shall be deposited intact within 24 hours. 
According to the city and department cash handling procedures, deposits are to be verified by a second cashier. Per department procedures, when a second cashier is unavailable to verify a deposit, the cashier is to immediately contact the immediate supervisor and secondary chain of command by email stating that he or she was the only employee on duty and provide details of the deposit. We noted exceptions to this policy in our deposit testing. During our unannounced visit to Floyd Land Park on March 2nd, 2022, we observed that one of the cashiers had placed the, their change fund near the cash register after removing it from the safe, but did not place it in their locked cash register drawer as required by policy. Per city policy, safe combinations are to be changed when an employee with safe access separates from employment. During that period from September 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022, six gatehouse employees separated from employment at the city with the city. Parks management did not request a safe combination change following four of the six employee separations. One of the two incidents, incidents, instances where a, safe, where a request was made for safe combination change was 17 days following the employee separation. Parks management is not conducting periodic cash handling audits at Floyd Land Park as required by policy. We recommend that parks management should consult with finance on how Floyd Land Park can comply with the city's requirement that all cash collections be deposited within 24 hours. Further, parks management should train cashiers on the additional procedures required to be followed when a second cashier is unavailable for verification of a deposit and implement procedures to ensure they are followed. Parks management should require gatehouse cashiers to keep their assigned change fund in the safe or a locked register drawer when unattended and document and implement procedures to periodically verify that this is being done. Parks management should document and implement procedures to notify the city locksmith of the need for a safe combination change at the gatehouse immediately upon separation from employment of a gatehouse employee and ensure this is completed in a timely manner. And finally, parks management should conduct periodic cash handling audits at the, of the Floyd Lamb Park gatehouse. Finding number two. The department's cash handling procedures, PR 005.1, for the gatehouse have not been updated since April 1, 2018, and some of the procedures do not reflect current practices. The following are examples of areas needing updates. Procedures refer to the use of a previously used software known as RecTrack. Procedures reference the use of honor boxes, which are no longer used. Procedures require customers to sign credit card receipts, which is no longer required and procedures prohibit the writing of anything other than the required information on the deposit documentation. However, the current practice is to write solo on the deposit slip when there is a second, when there isn't a second cashier available to verify the deposit. We recommend that parks management should update their cash handling procedures to reflect current practices and document software and document the current software being used. Finding number three, entry into the Floyd Land Park gatehouse is controlled by keyed doors of, and all employees working in the gatehouse are given their own key. The city locksmith maintains a record of keys issued to employees and flags keys that are, return, that are not returned upon an employee separation from employment with the city. A report provided by the city employees separation from, or I'm sorry, A report provided by the city locksmith showed that since 2007, when the city assumed operations of Floyd Land Park, five gatehouse employees had not returned their keys upon separation from employment. Parks management did not request that the gatehouse door locks be rekeyed until after the departure of the fifth employee and had not returned, who had not returned his key in July of 2022. The gatehouse was rekeyed on August 11, 2022. According to the city's key control policy, department directors are responsible for requesting changes to locks and for conducting biannual audits of keys issued to the department and reporting any breaches and or deficiencies in the city to the city locksmiths. Parks management does not adequately track the status of the gatehouse keys and are not conducting biannual audits of the gatehouse keys as required by policy. <coughs> We recommend that parks management should maintain records of employees with keys to the gatehouse and perform a biannual audit of these keys. Parks management should reconcile their records 
to those of the city of Locksmith during these audits. Parks management should document and implement procedures requiring that locks to the gatehouse be changed by the city locksmiths whenever an employee fails to return their key upon separation from the employment from employment with the city. Finding number four. Vehicles entering Floydland Park must pay a daily entrance fee or have previously purchased an annual pass. Vehicles with individuals who are active duty military, veterans, handicapped, or realtors are granted free access to the park with appropriate identification. The number of vehicles entering the park for free is tracked by the cashiers manually, cashiers manually on a tally sheet. The total of these vehicles from the tally sheet is then entered into the Civic Rec software at the end of each day. In order to minimize the risk of theft by employees at the gatehouse, Parks Management tries to schedule two employees at a time working at the gatehouse <coughs> and has a security camera within the gatehouse. The following deficiencies were noted in the gatehouse security and payment collection process. One. There is no automated device for independently counting the number of vehicles entering the park. Without this information, the accuracy of the payments collected at the gatehouse cannot be verified and theft of funds may go undetected. And finally, the manual tracking of number, the number of vehicles entering the park for free is subject to human error and manipulation. A cashier could accept payment from a vehicle, pocket the cash, and record the vehicle as a free admission without detection when there is not a second cashier. There are not always two employees working in the gatehouse due to limited staff absences and work breaks, creating an opportunity for a single employee to steal cash without detection. <coughs> there is no signage at the, at the site stating the customer is entitled to a receipt and a phone number to call in case one is not provided. Without such a sign, there is increased risk of an opportunity for a cashier to accept payment from a ca customer, pocket the cash, and skip recording the payment in the payment software without detection. The current positioning of the single security camera may not adequately capture the handling of cash between a customer and the cashier. We recommend that parks management evaluate the autom automated devices that exist for tracking the number of vehicles entering the park and purchase and install such a device at the gatehouse entrance. Parks management should then document and implement a process for verifying the accuracy of park entrance payment collections. And using the data, using the data captured on the number of individuals entering the park. Parks management should request that Civic Rec be updated to allow for recording of vehicles entering the park for free at the time of the admittance. Parks management should always schedule two employees to work the gatehouse. Parks management should create and install signage at the gatehouse alerting customers they are entitled to a receipt and should call a specific number if a gatehouse employee fails to provide a receipt. Additionally, management should document and implement procedures for investigating reports of receipts not being provided. Parks management should evaluate the feasibility of installing additional cameras at the gatehouse that are closer to where entrance fees are being collected from the public. All right. I'd like to thank Parks Management and staff for help with this audit. Parks Management supports our findings and recommendations and their responses to our recommendations and estimated dates of completion can be found on the back of the report. I'd now be happy to answer any questions you may have. Steve Ford, the Parks Director, is also in attendance to respond to your questions. Thank you, Mr. Burnett. Are there any questions from the committee? Sure. This is Eric Price, committee member. I have one question. Uh, the question is regarding the uh, cash collection policies and the deposit within 24 hours. I know this is something that is citywide and has come up in some of the other audits as far as the ability of the departments to, to do that on a Friday or on a holiday. Um, have other departments come up with an adequate resolution or is there a possibility of taking a look at this requirement and seeing if it is operationally um, uh, necessary or creates a, an, an onus on the, the smaller departments? Uh, have, have there, are there other small departments that have, that have found solutions that could be adopted? 
Member Price, James Burnett Sr. and Todd Otter, thank you for your question. R right now, uh, there has not been a department that I know of that has uh, adequately created a alternative procedure to address this. Uh, we have been in discussion with um, finance and uh, we're working with them to uh, see if they can update their procedures, but nothing has come out, come out at this moment. City Manager Cervantes. Yes, Mayor Chairperson, thank you through you. Uh, we are working on a citywide policy. The Finance Department, along with our CFO, have doing that. Uh, they're almost wrapping that up. Right now, what we found is different departments have different policies, so we're going to standardize this through their all. Uh, in order to not hold up these audits, we're asking this department to write a short-term policy they can implement until the citywide one is updated, but we should have that within the next couple of months. Okay, Committee Member Polanski. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Burnett, uh, you mentioned that the cash handling procedures have not been updated since 2018. Is there any intent on doing that soon? Uh, Member Polanski, uh, James Burnett, Senior Internal Auditor. Uh, we have been working with Parks and Rec, and they have presented us a their main procedure, but uh, their work, the information we got last week was that they're in the process of finishing up the seasonal pools in Floydland Park uh, mm -hmm. procedure. So that's uh, in due time? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then um, addressing the the key controls, it's interesting. I have a small business and I have the same issue. And it seems like five keys in 15 years misplaced and not returned by ex-employees is pretty low. Um, I probably have that in one year. So 15 years is not much. Um, do we know how much it costs? Do we have our own locksmiths? Maybe this is a newbie question. I don't know the answer to any of these questions, but I know on the open market it costs about $250 every time if you were to call ABC Locksmith out of the telephone book. Uh, Member Polinsky, uh, James Burnett, uh, we do have our own locksmiths. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the costs, I'm not aware of any costs. Uh, one of the risks, particularly with that site, is the remote location and the fact that staff are, not only do they have the key, but they also have the safe combination, which we did find deficiencies in changing of the safe combination as well. That also, the locksmith can change the key combination, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it's just a matter of oversight? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the cost of a second cashier is significant, correct? It's double payroll. Yes, ma'am. However, it is the city's policy that they have two cashiers. Even if we camera it up more? That's the policy. Okay. So yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Seems expensive. Any further questions? Um, yeah, just for clarity, you mentioned that there is uh, software that they all use and we have cameras, but they're probably not adequate. Is there some way we can automate the number of cars that come through and monitoring that? It seems like a large onus for someone to sit there with a, um, a watch or a clicker and click every car that goes through. Yes, ma'am, and in finding number four, we actually did address that issue. Uh, we are asking that they look into uh, systems that are available to and if feasible to install such systems. Okay. Do they have a system with license plates like what A red? Yeah. Can you mention that? The chair had a good good thought that there is some camera reading ability we have in other jurisdictions within the city to read license plates and to capture those. Any interest or uh, I see Mr. Ford nodding his head in the audience there. It seems like it's 2023. It's Mr. Ford, do you want to come up and answer this question for us? That would be great. Thank you. Good morning. Steve Ford, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs. Yes, um, we'd actually talked to our uh, chief of DPS about uh, license plate reading um, uh, cameras. There's a, there's a little bit of a cost that, obviously. We're looking at actually a couple of other options that we may uh, put together for that. One of the options is to create a, 
a parking garage type system where just like the Main Street garage, you swipe your credit card, you swipe whatever it is, the gates go up, you go in, that takes the, the human part of it completely out of it. Uh, there's, some, there's some, that's obviously kind of a longer term option because it's going to take time to construct and put all of that equipment in. There's a shorter term option that we're exploring with traffic to use traffic counters, just like you use on a roadway to, to, tra to track um, the number of cars going through. That one's not going to be quite as uh, accurate as because as, as um, Jeff showed on, our, on the thing, we have different uh, numbers dollar amounts, people get in free if you're military, whatever. So that will give us a kind of a general idea, but won't be as accurate as doing the, the long-term fix. A follow-up question. Sure. Um, any consideration of making a no-cash policy, and then we would only need one person rather than two? It seems like that. that. That's, all, that's also under consideration to, to have a, a no-cash policy as well. Okay. Are there any further questions? Well, if not, I may I have a motion? Motion to accept. There's a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. Moving on to item number six. Agenda item number six, report by staff and discussion for possible action regarding an update on the audit recommendations with a status of incomplete. Brian Smith, internal audit section manager, will you please give the report, Mr. Smith? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, committee members. Brian Smith, internal audit section manager. As you're aware, prior to the finalization of every audit report, city management provide us with a management action plan and an estimated date of completion for each audit recommendation. These management responses are found at the back of every audit report. Upon release of an audit report, an audit recommendation is classified as not due. Once management's estimated date of completion passes and the recommendation has not yet been verified by an auditor as having been addressed, the classification of the recommendation is changed to incomplete. Once an audit recommendation has been verified by an auditor as having been addressed, the recommendation classification is then changed to complete. Over the past year, city departments have completed 66 audit recommendations, resulting in improved internal controls at the city. There are currently 17 recommendations that are not due and nine recommendations that are incomplete. Today I'd like to review through the incomplete audit recommendations with you by department. There are currently only two departments with incomplete audit recommendations, Public Works, Fleet and Fuel Services Division, and Neighborhood Services. Management's estimated dates of completion are noted next to each recommendation on the slides. I'll start with the uh, Department of Public Works, Fleet and Fuel Services. The Fleet and Fuel Services Division of Public Works has one remaining incomplete recommendation from a fueling audit report issued in June 2021. This recommendation was that Fleet implement procedures to review compliance with city departments with the secondary pro key reconciliation procedures. Tracy Scott, Fleet Manager, is in attendance and is here to respond to any questions you may have about their efforts to address this remaining audit recommendation. Good morning, Ms. Scott. Please proceed with providing us an update on your efforts to address this recommendation. Good morning, Tracy Scott, Fleet and Fuel Services Manager. The last recommendation requires us to do a spot check of the reconciliation records for each of the departments that have these. We recently did that to close to make it a citywide policy, so that was made official November 22nd. And then we had a retirement of, of one of the person that issued those automated records. And we've recently had a replacement. She's given all the departments, all of the records from I believe December through today, and I'm waiting for them to get something for me to review. So they have to reconcile everything, so I wanna reach back at that point and give them a couple of months to generate some records that we haven't already confirmed, and at that point, it'll be closed. Okay, thank you, Ms. Scott. I do have a quick question before I ask anybody else. Uh, so do you have an estimated time we are looking to have that done. Oh, Tracy Scott, Fleet and Fuel Services Manager. Uh, we're looking to have that done the around July. 
I'm just going to reach out and spot check. I'm giving them time to make sure they're following the policy because in order to get it written, they kind of hurried up and got everything together. So I want to make sure that this is just part of what they do. Do I have any other questions from the committee? No. Vice no, Chair? Thank you. thank you. Okay. Okay, Ms. Sith, let's move on to the next Department of Neighborhood Services. Thank you, Madam Chair. Brian Smith, Internal Audit Section Manager. Neighborhood Services has eight incomplete audit recommendations found on this and the following slide from a gift card audit that was issued just recently this past September. These recommendations relate to the need for documenting and implementing department procedures on the handling and management oversight of gift cards. Neighborhood Services has provided us with their department gift card policy and procedures and we've begun our follow-up process to verify that the audit recommendations have been addressed. In conjunction with our completion of four department gift card audits, we also issued a report to finance recommending that they update the city's gift card policy and procedures. And uh, this report included various deficiencies that we found in the policy as we were completing the department audits. Finance is currently in process of updating the city's gift card policy and has reached out to departments, including neighborhood services, for their feedback. Um, I believe our Celia Barajas, Deputy Director, is in attendance to answer any questions you may have on their progress in addressing these recommendations. Good morning, Ms. Barajas. Please proceed with providing us an update on your efforts to address these recommendations. Um, we have, as Brian mentioned, we've already developed a process to um, our new policies for the gift card um, oversight. We have kind of gone through a couple of months with our management team to go through the process to ensure that we're able to um, follow them um, in accordance with what's been um, developed. And we are currently working on some follow-up questions that um, the audit department had so that they can come out and then do a review or um, check to ensure that we are implementing our um, policies. Thank you, Ms. Barajas. Do we have any questions from the members? All right, may I have a motion? Uh, this is Eric Price, the Vice Chair, motion to accept. Okay, there's a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Please post. Um, Vice Chair Price, can you say aye? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. We'll move on to item number seven. Agenda item number seven, report by staff regarding current audits. Brian Smith, Internal Audit Section Manager, will also give this report. Please go ahead, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair. Brian Smith, Internal Audit Section Manager. Our office is currently involved in the audits of the payment collection sites shown on this slide. There we go. Our objectives in completing these audits are to verify that customer payments are receipted, recorded, and deposited in accordance with the department's and the city's cash handling policies and procedures, that funds are properly secured, and that system access permissions assigned to employees are appropriate for their job responsibilities. That concludes my report. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Are there any questions from the committee? No. Seeing none. No, thank you. Oh, Vice Chair Price, do you have a question? Uh, none. Thank okay. You. Oh, this is a item is a report only, and no motion is required. We will move on to item number eight, agenda item number eight, discussion regarding topics for further agenda items. Comments made during this portion of the agenda by individual members shall refer solely to proposals for future agenda items, and any discussion shall be limited to whether or not such proposed items are within the purview of the committee and or whether such proposed items shall be placed on a future agenda. No discussion regarding the substance of any such proposed topic shall occur and no action shall be taken. Does anyone here have suggestions regarding future agenda item topics? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item number nine. 
uh, agenda item number nine is citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the committee. No subject may be acted upon by the committee unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record. The amount of discussion on any single subject as well as the amount of any time any single speaker is involved may be limited. Is there anyone wishing to be heard at this time? All right, seeing none, I'll close citizens' participation and we'll move on to item number 10. Agenda item number 10, adjournment. The next Audit Oversight Committee meeting is scheduled for Monday, July 10th, 2023. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.